How's it going everybody? In my last video I mentioned how I was going to be taking the Yamaha TW200 on a 5500 mile round trip of the Continental Divide Great Divide motorcycle route. Today we're going to be talking about my luggage, what I'm bringing with me, how I'm packing it, and where it's going to be packed on the bike. So I figure to start with we'll start what I'll have on me and then we'll go through the bags from front to rear uh, what I'm packing, how I'm packing, and where it's at. So stick around if you're interested in seeing what I'm going to take with me on a 5,500 mile loop on a TW200. Here we go. Okay, we'll just work our way from head to toe. Uh, to start with, I've got the Bell LMAX 9 Adventure. I have it set up with a microphone for my GoPro using the chin mount. I also have uh, the uh, Cardone uh, Spirit installed so I can talk to my wife or take phone calls or talk to anybody else who happens to have a, uh, a intercom system. I've also got on the back, I've got a pair of goggles with the uh, old Quick Connect. I can't remember what it's called. But it allows your goggles to stay back there. You can easily unvelcro them and bring them around to the front if you need goggles. I've also got the uh, face shield. So if it starts raining, throw down the face shield. If I need some air, I can open it up. It's a good helmet. It's comfortable. It's a little heavy, but all in all, not bad. Coming down, next I have my uh, merino wool gaiter that will be used to... Uh, Help keep the sun off my neck, can give me some dust protection if I need to pull it up, cover my face. Um, Multi-use, I love the uh, Merino wool gaiters. Next, I'll be wearing the Scorpion XO uh, Covert. This is a fully lined flannel. It has Kevlar over every inch of the inside. I don't have any pads in. Uh, but I will have uh, skid resistance in case I go down. Just no padding. Underneath that, I'll be wearing a long sleeve fishing shirt from uh, Realtree. These are uh, give you sun protection. They're moisture wicking. They're lightweight. They're quick drying. They are great shirts. I absolutely love them. They are also relatively inexpensive at Walmart. About $12 a piece. Um, I really, really like those shirts. Moving on down, I will have the Crosswind gloves. Uh, I'm going to be wearing these because I will be on concrete and dirt. And these do give you some slide protection for concrete. They're a little beefy for dirt, but I would rather err on the side of caution. I've got Fanny Pack. Fanny Pack will have... All the stuff I need right away, such as chapstick, uh, sunscreen, little odds and ends, uh, anything like that that I need to get to quickly without having to dig into my luggage. I can just wear this little fanny pack. I wore it on a 200 mile trip the other day and it was comfortable, it was great. Uh, I really liked it, I was really surprised. I didn't think I would like a fanny pack, but I do. Coming down next to the uh, pants. These are the Phantom Pants from Moto Nation. Um, I've got them in a size large. I really should have went with extra large. Um, they are borderline on a little too tight, but I do like the zip pockets and then you can zip them open for air. I think they'll work really well uh, as a everyday pant. I'll wear a pair of shorts underneath them, um, but they're going to give me protection. They have pads in the knees and the hips, as well as slide protection with the ballistic nylon and the knees. Um, so I've got protection and they're going to be comfortable and being a mostly light colored will help with the uh, heat of the desert. And then lastly, coming on down, I've got these uh, three-quarter length boots that I got from Moto Nation as well. Uh, they are a waterproof, uh, nice little lightweight boot. 
I like them. I've been very happy with them. So, so that is everything I'm going to be wearing for the trip. I will change out shirts and underwear and shorts and socks as needed, but that's going to be the uh, bulk of, if you will, of my riding gear. The first bit of luggage I've got is out here on the front fender. Uh, the TW fender has a lot of flex in it and will bounce a lot. So I've got minimal amount of gear in here. And uh, what I've got, if I can get it out relatively easy, I've got Motion Pro uh, Bead Buddy 2. I've got the Motion Pro uh, Realm Shield 2. I've got two of those. And then inside here, I've got an old piece of Tyvek. Uh, this stuff is great. It lasts forever. I use it underneath my tent. Uh, use it for a drop cloth if you have to work on the ground. You can spread this out. And then I've got three Tusk uh, tire spoons in here. This fender does bounce, so I don't have the uh, tube up here. The tube is heavier than the tools I've got up here. Uh, so this is as light as I can get my uh, front here because I didn't want this to break. I didn't want to put too much stress on it. But I liked the idea of having all of my tools and a drop cloth to work on real quick and easy to get to. And the bag is the uh, Tusk brand uh, fender bag. So that's what I've got on my front fender. Coming on back, next we have the Rig Gear Adventure bag. This is the small adventure. Um, it's small enough, it stays out of my way while standing, while sitting. Gives me a little bit of storage space, but I probably should have went up one size. Uh, inside here, I've got a quick little tool kit. I've got a pair of vice grips. I've got a Gerber multi-tool. I've got a set of metric uh, hex keys. And then over here, it's not JIS, but I have a set of metric uh, screwdrivers. So those generally ride right there easy to get to. I can grab it out and I've got a good amount of tools right here. Uh, next, I've got a battery backup. I've got my GoPro double battery charger. I've got spare GoPro batteries. I've got a small uh, tripod. I've got patch kit. I've got scabs. Uh, I got some carabiners. I've got a cigarette lighter. Uh, some zip ties. This is just kind of a catch-all. I've also got my registration and my uh, insurance tucked in there. Uh, this is just kind of a quick, easy to get to uh, charging station slash junk drawer, if you will. Uh, I like the idea of having some tools right up there, easy to get to, so I don't have to dig in my bag. Uh, I also can fit my cell phone in here. I don't put it in this clear protector because the sun on this will get too hot. But inside here, my, sun, uh, my phone has not gotten too hot yet. Um, but just kind of everything. I've got the cables coming from the charger coming in. I can alternate between charging my cell phone, charging GoPro batteries, and this battery backup. And I charge the battery back up so that when I get to camp at night, I can have this to charge up anything else that didn't get charged throughout the day. So it's a junk drawer, if you will. Uh, easy to get to tool setup. Um, easy to get to quick access items. Just things like that's what goes in here. And it all fits. The bag is small enough that while standing on the bike, 
Uh, it stays out of the way of my junk and of the fanny pack. Uh, small enough to give me some items, but I probably would have liked a little bit bigger uh, if I would have had the opportunity to get something. But as of right now, uh, that's what I've got. And it appears to be working good so far. This is where we start getting into the big ticket items. This is where all of the real items are that are needed for this trip. So to start with, I have the uh, Giant Loop uh, two gallon fuel bladder. I'm gonna be using this uh, for times when the 2.7 gallon tank isn't enough. It is mounted to the uh, Tusk 33 liter duffel bag and the Tusk 33 liter duffel bag is mounted to the Tusk excursion system and all of that is mounted to the Tusk rear rack. So yeah, it's kind of a free advertisement, I guess, for uh, Rocky Mountain ATV, but they make good gear and it's not real expensive. And with that said, there is one thing I really dislike about this system, and we'll get into that in a minute. So this is the three major items. I'll show you what it looks like on the bike, and then we'll take each one off and dive into what's inside of them. Okay, so what we have here is the Tusk Excursion Rackless System, a 511 first aid kit, a Nelson rig, a water bottle holder, fuel bottle holder. I've got a one liter bottle of water, Tusk 33 liter duffel bag, a, another one liter bottle of water and the uh, same carrier and the other side of the excursion. So let's take these off the bike and we'll go through what we've got in each one. This is what the system looks like unmounted. We'll go through and show you what's in each bag. I will start with the uh, excursion rackless system and make my way up to the duffel bag. The excursion system has everything needed for the motorcycle and the duffel bag is everything needed for me. Okay, so here's everything I carry in the left-hand side. We've got the uh, Micro Start air pump from Anti-Gravity Batteries. I've got a valve core remover, spare valve cores, and uh, valve caps. I've got the cables needed to connect it to the battery. I've got a air pressure gauge. I carry a spare rear tube spare front tube, a spare rag, a brush, chain wax. I've got some electrical tape, electrical connectors, dielectric grease, chain breaker, smart water bottle, and an additional uh, towel that I use to wrap around the front tube since it doesn't have anything on it to protect it. I don't want anything rubbing against it over the many miles and causing a hole in the tube. So that's everything I carry on the left hand side. Now we'll go over to the right hand side. So here we've got the right hand side. We'll start with the first aid kit and this is more than I've got a boo-boo. We have wound packing gauze an emergency six inch flat trauma dressing, hemofiber uh, hemostatic pad to stop bleeding, and a Israeli bandage, as well as a Cat 7 tourniquet. This is for major issues. This isn't, I've got a little scratch. This is to save my life or someone else's life along the trail. Coming up, we've got my Gore-Tex rain gear. I've got pants and jacket, both Gore-Tex, that will fit over all of my riding gear without having to take anything off. Um, it is GI surplus stuff that I got from the Army when I left, so it's camouflage, but it works. 
Next there, that is a socket set with eight to 19 millimeter sockets. I then have the ratchet and wrenches going from 10 to 19 mil, uh, 10 to 19 millimeter. I've got a Matco 12 inch adjustable wrench, zip ties, a complete oil change with a spare set of O-rings and oil filter and a full quart of oil and a smart water bottle. All of that is what I carry in the rackless system. Now, the pros and cons of this system. We will get into that next. The installation and removal of this system is its number one pro. It is super easy to get on and off. It's got like four straps, done, easy, peasy. It's great. The cons for this thing are number one, it has never fit a single motorcycle I've tried it on properly. It didn't fit my uh, Honda CRF 300 Rally, doesn't fit my DR650, doesn't fit the TW200, and I even tried it on my wife's uh, Honda Monkey. None of them had actually fit right. Uh, so you've got to kind of live with a sloppy fit. And that's not the end of the world. I mean, a sloppy fit kind of sucks, but it is what it is. This is a universal system that universally doesn't work for any of the motorcycles I've tried. Another problem is right here, this little piece that they have sewn on that goes all the way around both bags. Let's see if you can see it there. This gusseted area, you can't hardly pack anything through it. It is hard stitched on, and if it's, you can't, it, it keeps it from being able to be packed. You can't cram stuff in. You have to specifically work around that right there, and it sucks. I don't like that. They need to come up with a different way for that. It limits how much you can put in the bag because you can get good, uh, like a good stuff from here down, but you can't do anything from here up. So you lose all of this space, all this usable space basically comes down to that right there. So I really wish they would figure out another way to do that. Make this adjustable. If, you, if this has to be here, Put a buckle on it, allow us to open it up, and then cinch it down as needed. But anyway, that's everything and the rackless system. That's everything I'm taking for the motorcycle. Now let's get into what I'm taking for me. Okay, here's everything from the Tusk duffel bag. We will just start all the way down here at the bottom. We've got a uh, little Luma Aid that is a... Uh, pop-up lantern uh, it is solar rechargeable i've got a change of clothes for what i'll wear under my riding gear and i've got a change of sleep clothes rei flex light chair and this tusk dry bag i have my hammock gear premium burrow 20 degree one ounce overstuffed quilt thermarest X-Therm. Now I'm bringing two different shelter systems and I'll explain why. To start off with here in the middle, I've got my Bora Gear DCF Dyneema Bivy. And I love using a Bivy. It's quick, it's easy, no chance of bad weather, I'm in that. I've also got a small tarp. The small tarp can be used in case of a breakdown, needing shade, whatever. We can throw up the tarp have some shade, have some protection, quick and easy like. If there's a slight chance of weather, I can run these two together. The bivy and the tarp, good to go. If there's for sure gonna be weather, I'm bringing my Lanshan One. It is a one person uh, tent, weighs about two pounds. Everyone's really familiar with this. I have the Z-Pax uh, carbon fiber tent pole in here. So you don't need a trekking pole. It'll use that tent pole to set it up. 
And all of that is setting on another piece of Tyvek to protect the bottom of the bivy or the bottom of the uh, tent. I've also got my Sea to Summit uh, Eros pillow. This is the deluxe with the top here that you're seeing is down. Flip it over on the other side, you've got like a microfiber. I've got shower shoes. I've got a loofah and a towel for showering. I then have my toiletry bag, soap, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, and uh, mouth guard uh, because I uh, have sleep apnea and I sleep with a uh, tap mouth guard in. Since we're going to be hitting town every day for fuel, I'm not bringing a lot of food. I'm bringing some electrolytes. I am bringing uh, some oatmeal and some packages of coffee. So in the morning before we leave camp, I can have oatmeal and coffee. That is my cook kit. It is a Tox 550 milliliter with the fuel, the BRS uh, 3000 stove, a lighter, and a piece of, uh, of a napkin all inside of it. And it is setting on a collapsible bowl and a collapsible uh, cup. So if I need an extra cup, need a bowl, I've got it. So that is everything that's going inside the tusk bag. This is my camping gear for the trip. However, I do have one caveat. I have one thing I forgot to show you earlier, so we're going to get to that now. One thing I forgot about earlier when I was talking about gear I'm going to be wearing, which is pretty important, is my hydration system and a couple of quick layers. Now what we have here is just a cheap Walmart backpack. Uh, it's got a Camelback uh, name brand, three liter uh, water bladder inside of it. And that's going to be my main source of hydration is these three liters. And then I've got the two liters of water mounted on the motorcycle. So aside from those, I do have, I do have a one liter bag and a Sawyer squeeze for filtering water out in the field. I have my Spot X, uh, emergency beacon slash GPS slash way to I can text home. Think of a Garmin inReach, but for poor people, and that's what this is. And then I've got Nightcore headlamp. Since we're gonna be at different elevations and different temperature, I've got a pair of warm or cold weather gloves to help keep my hands warm. I've got two different bottles for memory cards. I've got one marked full, one empty. I've got my Diddy bag. This has trowel, uh, wet wipes. It has uh, all the stuff needed for going to the bathroom. Um, I've also got some aspirin in here if I need it, which I'll probably end up putting in my fanny pack, but it's in here for now. But toilet paper, wet wipes, and a trowel, uh, all the good stuff for going number two in the field. And then in the main compartment, uh, starting out cold in the morning or at camp, I've got my enlightened equipment, Torrid. And then I've got this REI windshield, a uh, little windbreaker. Throwing this on top of this is absolutely amazing. And then you combine all th this with this and that scorpion shirt and you are toasty. You've got a windbreak, you've got the shirt, and then you've got an extra layer of insulation. Works really, really well together. You can just wear this and like a riding shirt in the morning to keep some of the chill off. It's still kind of chilly. This is just a windbreak, but uh, I really like it. It packs down small. Um, it wasn't that expensive. It's the REI Flash uh, windbreaker and the uh, Enlightened Equipment Torrid makes a great combination. Super lightweight. I really, really like it. Okay, so now you've seen everything that I'm taking with me on this 5,500 mile round trip journey from Arkansas to New Mexico, Mexico border to do the Continental Divide slash Great Divide slash motorcycle route, whatever you want to call it. 
and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the good thing about this is you're passing through town every day to get fuel, so I don't have to pack a lot of food with me, and if I need some supplies, I can easily get those while I'm in town. Worst case scenario, I'll be uncomfortable for a couple of hours until we get there. But hopefully, I haven't forgot anything. I will be doing a follow-up video when I get back, breaking down all of the gear on what worked and what did not work. I'm pretty sure I've got everything dialed in pretty well. I, I come from the ultralight backpacking world, so most of this gear translates over pretty well. The only thing is I'm not used to having to carry so much stuff for the motorcycle with your tubes and your compressors and tools and stuff. But all in all, I think I've got it pared down pretty light, and I believe the old mighty TW200 will handle it. Uh, I will be doing a blog vlog of the trip, but I'm going to be out there and I won't have a way to edit the videos while in the field. So I'm going to have to wait until I get home to edit all the videos and start putting those out. So I've been throwing out a video or two every week for the past couple of months. So uh, you guys will have a, a, a lull of no videos for a little while. And uh, sorry about that, but that's just the nature of the beast. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I uh, look forward to using all this gear in the field and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Uh, it'll be a few weeks from now, so be safe, be kind, and uh, we'll see you guys later. As always, like, share, subscribe, pass this along to your friends, comment below what you would change. What should I bring? What shouldn't I bring? We'll see you guys later.